Hello and welcome at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. We are here in the Infrared Space Laboratory and here in this lab I spent quite many years working on the James Webb MIRI wheel mechanisms. So MIRI is a one of the four scientific instruments of the James Webb Space Telescope. Here is the filter wheel which is inside the imaging part of MIRI. It has uh, 18 positions and the idea is like in an old camera if you could change the blue filter, the red filter, the green filter. The same scientists want to do in space but of course they can't do it manually. So you put different filters on a wheel and then you move the wheel to the specific uh, position requested and the wheel mechanisms have been developed uh, and uh, qualified here at MPAA by MPAA staff. MIRI is the only instrument which is built by a uh, scientific consortium of about 20 partners, each of them delivering pieces. As said, we, MPAA, delivered three wheel mechanisms, the filter wheel being one of them. We started in 2003. In 2006, when I started here, the design was done and we really could go to the qualification, manufacturing and test phase. So MIRI is the only of the four instruments in James Webb which is going to the mid-infrared wavelength range. That means it can cover uh, wavelengths between uh, 5 and 28 micron. This make it, makes it unique among the other instruments. So if you want to observe infrared light from space, you have to cool down your instruments in order to be not disturbed by the own heat radiation of your instruments. And every heat source you do have is disturbing your scientific measurements. So if you move a wheel, you have a motor, you need some current to move the wheel and this is then uh, having some heat load. What we did in order to reduce this is that we measured the parameters of the wheel, like the mass and the moment of inertia. We measured them as precisely as we could and we do calculate the minimum current that is needed to move the wheel safely into another position. So the MIRI instrument, and thus also the filter wheel, has to be cooled down to 7 Kelvin. This is 7 degrees above the absolute zero point, or something like minus 266 degrees Celsius. And this is why we have to test all our components in this wheel and the wheel in general uh, for so-called space qualification. One of the first things I had to do when I started in 2006 here in the lab was to qualify magnets and uh, field plates, so small resistors, which are used for the position sensor in this wheel. So three major qualification steps, cryocycling, irradiation and shaker table. When the complete MIRI instrument was assembled, functionally tested at our Prime Institute in the UK, then we could start our performance testing. For the performance testing, the complete MIRI instrument was put into a big cryo chamber where it was cooled down and in front of the chamber there was a telescope simulator that could simulate starlight, galaxy light and with this light, we could test the, for the first time the performance of the complete MIRI instrument. In 2012, we finally could deliver our MIRI instrument to NASA. So we really had to check that everything is fine. And we also had to check whether the performance data is still the same or whether there are some interactions or disturbances from the other instruments. Finally, the complete James Webb telescope was launched on the Christmas day of 2021. Of course, as most of the other people, I was sitting in front of the laptop, really watching the launch with my family and really hoping that everything went fine. So this was, I think, the 
nicest Christmas present I ever had. After the launch, it's not the end for the engineering team. You have to test the instruments functionally and then you do the performance tests of your instruments and then you get your in-flight calibration data. So during the commissioning phase, a lot of engineering data was taken, also from scientific objects, of course. And uh, one of the nicest pictures I saw was a comparison of uh, the MIRI image of part of the large Magellanic cloud compared to the Spitzer data. Spitzer is another old uh, infrared space telescope and it had an instrument comparable to the wavelength range of MIRI on board. And so there you could see two pictures of the very same region of the large Magellanic cloud and you could really see the difference. So the MIRI picture was so much sharper, did reveal so much more detail into the depths of the universe that you really thought, okay, there's many years of work and efforts that's really worth it.